The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Episode 6, Thoughts. So, real quick, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming... Uh, bleh, I need... I should change that. Upcoming MCU entries in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by New Rockstar Screen Rant, Nerdist, CBR Screen Crush, and Black Nerd Comedy. Okay, so I'm trusting that people who have watched the video up to this point, either they already watched episode 6, or they don't mind spoilers, so now I will say I really love this episode of Captain America and the Winter Soldier, as the end credits identified as. Really, really nice little, as you know, I didn't see that coming when, you know, every... I, I just, just, uh, let's see, not yesterday, but the couple of days ago, I rewatched the first five episodes, and, you know, when you already know a lot, you know, you maybe especially notice stuff that you didn't necessarily, think. I, I never really thought about that the, you know, the title sequence, it's, it's a little low-key, it's not like big bombastic kind of thing, and for that it works really well when they bring it back in the you know, for the end credits of, of something like this. Yeah, actually now that no, I don't I don't think did they bring it up for the end I think this was the only one where it got brought up for the end credits. And yeah, they brought it up for the end credits and they you know now it was Captain America. So really loving that. Now let's see. Yeah, so in the final trailer of the show, Sam says the Flag Smashers of Human Abilities. And they must be part of the big three, aliens, robots, and wizards. And, you know, there had been... Uh, you know, that led to some theorizing that maybe they would be mutants or inhumans or something. But ultimately it was Super Soldier Serum. And... I, I do just briefly want to say, I think the show did fine... Overall, I'm a bigger fan of WandaVision, but both of these shows are like 10 out of 10. You know, every episode is 10 out of 10. The the fact that, you know, WandaVision had a lot of theories, and most of them didn't really pan out. Like, there were, like, you know, some people went into, well, here are all the neighbors' names, and, you know, the, the, you've got the one who says devil's in the details, you've got Herb, I want to say, was Norm also one of them? I forget, but there were like just a, a ton of different ones, and a lot of them didn't pan out. For this one, there were a couple of theories that ultimately, you know, but by and large, it didn't really, like, there's stuff that didn't end up appearing on the show, but there's hints that it will come later, you know, but ultimately, I, I, I'm not sure, you know, yeah, the, actually, yeah, real, real brief, you know, so we didn't see any actual mutants on the show, well, as far as we know, I guess it's possible they'll retcon some of the, these characters to be mutants, but we did see Madripoor, and I want to say it's called the Princess Bar, you know, we see the, it's not the bar that they, that the tr trio go into, but they do pass it, so that's the bar, I'm pretty sure that's the bar in the comics that Wolverine, you know, has, has a bit of a connection to, so, yeah, it's, yeah, that, that, you know, and, and the, let's see, and, yeah, we, we now know who the power broker is, we know that, you know, Val is straight up, like, you know, she, it looks like she's putting together a team. It really doesn't seem like she's only interested in Walker. And, you know, yeah, that very likely might lead to the Dark Avengers or the Thunderbolts. Now, let's see. So, yeah, this is, yeah, a couple notes that I put in here before I started watching the show at all. Let's see, Bucky's very hardened from Captain America 2 onwards. Does this let him relax and become more well-adjusted to life? Would not a super soldier being forced to assassinate targets? It doesn't have any personal animosity towards Captain America 3. When Tony asks if Bucky even remembers killing Tony's parents, Bucky responds, I remember all of them. Have the lamb stopped screaming is what I'm asking. And really, by the end of this episode, the he he is a lot more, you know, he's he has 
fully made amends. It's it's a nice little thing of like, you know, Sam points out to him, you weren't making amends, you were avenging. You know, it's not, you're not gonna, you can't fix violent mistakes. You know, you, you made some mistakes, but you can't fix violence with more violence, you know, and it is one of those things where, well, I mean, technically it's a pretty good thing he got rid of that senator, I think she was a senator, who was like Hydra, but at the same time, you know, now he did actually talk to, I'm sorry, well, names Nakashima, I want to say, the, the, his neighbor who he would, you know, go out and eat with. And, yeah, you know, it, it kind of was, you know, when, when all you have is a metal arm, everything looks like something that would look cool to punch with a metal arm. And Sam points out, you know, you're not just a metal arm. You are, you contain multitudes, you're, you can do this, you know. And, yeah, that was basically, I mean, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? At the start of the... Let's see, when we meet him in episode one, actually, is that before he hands over the shield? Sam hands over the shield. I'm not 100% certain, but yeah, you know, he tells Sam, you gave up the shield, that means Sam might have been wrong. You know, if Sam was wrong about you, he was wrong about me. And that is kind of where he's, he's stuck. He, you know, basically in his entire life, nobody but Steve Rogers have nobody else has given him that second chance like for sure some people thought he was great before the winter soldier thing but after not a lot of people really had a lot you know and and when sam first you know captain america too he was also like i don't think he's the kind you save he's the kind you stop you know but ultimately you know because of steve's faith in him bucky was able to do some really great things and Falcon, Sam, came to really have faith in him. And, you know, he's he's able to go... Yeah, and it was a really moving scene, too, when he confessed to Nakashima. So, let's see. Yeah, so, first Kevin, it's still in notes. I, I swear, we're going to get to notes that for, for this specific episode. First Captain America movie comments in on how vicious the Nazis were, in part because they were white supremacists. Second Captain America movie comes in on how many white supremacists are in positions of power in America. Third Captain America movie comments in on how, in response to terrorism, a number of people are willing to give up civil rights. So when Falcon and the Winter Soldier is going to comment on, it appears certainly it's going to comment on how many white Americans don't believe that African Americans are equal to them. Hence, Captain America can't get away. And yeah. You know, it, it has been commenting on that, so I thought that was really great. You know, some, some people have pointed to the, you know, in this episode, Carly says, I, I don't want to kill people who don't matter, basically. And I, I might be slightly amending that line, but, you know, the, the John's response is, you say his life didn't matter, and that is, you know, that's what a lot of black people and their allies have realized is true about, you know, a lot of white people in America don't care when black people die. You know, it's, so, so that was a, a great call. You know, it's, it's always, is there a single episode that doesn't in some way comment on how, I guess, it might not always be for black people, but then for the Flag Smashers, every single episode comments on how if you're not a white American, you're treated badly by authorities, you know. In all three Captain America solo movies, near the end, Steve Rogers finds himself in certain times, but it's hard for us to see him succeed. So I wonder if the same thing will happen in this, but Falcon and or Bucky. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I honestly, when, when, you know, uh, what's his face? Batrock went full mask off and was like, you cost me a lot of money. And then he stopped talking, which is good because he's not that great of an, he's a, he's a terrific fighter. Please don't beat me up, dude. That is not the best acting I've ever seen. I'm sorry. That's, that's kind of, but he, you know, he, he sells it. He just, he has to be tough. And that he sells fine. But I wasn't sure that Sam was going to be able to defeat him. 
you know, he, okay, so he has the shield, and his suit can do things it couldn't do last time, but last time, Batroc defeated him, you know, it was, yeah, so, so that's, uh, I, I thought that was a really great, and let's see, in this, uh, also, sorry, also in this episode, gotta stop apologizing, also in this episode, we have, let's see, Bucky, is Bucky in a situation where we're not sure if he's going to be able to get out of it? I mean, I would say some of the fighting, it did look like he might lose, yeah. And, let's see, there's the... Yeah, real, real quick, uh, I think, was it... Ah, bad with names, Nerdist put out a video where, you know, they talked about, you know, the, let's see, is it the Bucky and Sam, was the third one Sharon, maybe, and, you know, they're down, like, tunnels, and then they split up, and, you know, Nerdist made a reference to Scooby-Doo, which is good, but seriously, they should have made a reference to the cabin in the woods, where it's Thor saying, let's split up, you know. Anyway, so, let's see, I guess, yeah, I'm just real quickly going to run through this. So, in the first Captain America solo movie, Steve has to stop Red Skull in Red Skull's jet, but he ends up on the outside of one of the tiny bombs that can be piloted, but he manages to fly back in. In the second solo movie, he only barely puts in the car to make sure that the Harrys don't kill thousands of people. In the third one, he very nearly loses to Tony. And, yeah, so since the MCU so far has had the main hero characters display positive traits for men, but anyway, I figured this show is going to keep up that theme, unlike some of the DCEU, DCEU movies, especially under Zack Snyder, better without him or with, or with less input by him, as of Wonder Woman 1. And, yeah, you know, I, let's see, is there stuff in this one? It, yeah, in, in this one, you know, John makes, yes, I've, I've been commenting on that as, you know, in, in, in these videos as I went on, John has a chance to go after Carly or to save the people, the, the GRC people in the, the, the truck, and he chooses to save people instead of, of using violence to, to feel better, so... Yeah, we're, yeah. Real quick, I don't think I made a note about it. In the, in this episode, Sharon has to take, you know, I, I love how she, she like, pretends to just bump into the guy, and then she's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to bump into you, and, and then, you know, he's, he's not gonna, like, punch a woman who's, like, apologizing, you know, that's, that's not what he's there to do, it's not, you know, so he sits in, and then, you know, and she's like, oh, you know, it was, it was mercury gas or something. Holy crap! And you know, I th I think it was Nerdist who pointed out. Yeah, I mean, she's she's bang she's banking on that pardon pretty hard because that's a that's like a violation of the the uh, what was it called the the Geneva Convention. You know, that is holy crap. The people stopped intentionally putting mercury inside human pe human beings' bodies quite some time ago because it was discovered just how harmful it is, so, yeah. So, after watching Civil War, I felt like the five super soldiers turning out to be dead was a bit of an anti-climax, but then the show has eight super soldiers on the loose from the very start, so I don't know if this is supposed to try to make up to people, but, like, it was an anti-climax. It's possible it just, you know, it's, it's possible that it was, that that wasn't something they were thinking about, but, yeah, you know, this certainly was a lot of super soldier serum action in, in you know, one, in, in these six episodes. I also want to very briefly say, I know, I've been, you know, praising WandaVision, this show, uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. I assure you, the moment that the MCU, you know, I have been calling out the MCU the couple of times that it disappointed me. Iron Man 2 has a lot of problems. Thor Ragnarok just really throws out everything about Thor that had led up to that point. Like, the only things that remain are the, the let's see. Okay, so some relationship with 
Odin and Loki, but other than that, like, you know, he, let's see, the last time we, yeah, before that, he leaves at the end of Age of Ultron, and he's like, people have, you know, we have been pawns of people who are seeking out the, the Infinity Stones, I will not rest until I find out what, and then, you know, smash cut to, you know, Thor Rangron, he's like, went to look for Infinity Stones, didn't find any, and he's, yeah, I made an entire video talking about that anyway, I'm just saying, I swear, the moment that they disappoint me again, I will be honest about it. So, let's see. Yeah, right. Ryan Airy of Screen Crush just did a video talking about where the shield that you see in the show might have come from. It's a good video. I recommend watching it. At the very end, his dog, using a text-to-speech program, is made to say that he wants more dog representation in the MCU. Bring, you know, He says, these are good boys. He brings up Cosmo the dog that we saw you know, in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and he's talking about that Cosmo should be a member of the Guardians in the third movie. I'm 100% behind him. That would be awesome. I would love that. Let's see. It's been a while since I last read about it, but if I recall, Cosmo communicates through telepathy, and because he's a Russian cos cosmonaut, his, like, his voice has a Russian accent. I mean, I don't know how you can't love that. They, Russians sent a dog into space on a rocket and it it's now got telepathy and it can communicate with human beings and there's actually there's some inherent conflict because in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie it's it's in the it's in the ah what's, what's he called again to Tiban the collector it's in one of the collectors collect collection collective glass things and when rocket moves past it they both growl at each other you know so and at the end of that movie after you know the the post pricing or mid credits scene, I forget which, we see, because, you know, if you remember the end of that movie, kind of went splody, his, his entire collection and some stuff, you know, and, and there at the end, it's like licking Tivan's face, and then Howard the Duck says that that's disgusting, you know, so he's free, he could, I, I think that would be great, it would, yes, 100%. So, in an earlier episode, Sam was racially profiled, and, yeah, so this, <laughs> We still aren't quite past the, the notes specifically for this episode, but these were my guesses after re-watching the first five episodes. If he becomes Captain America, maybe many more white people will look at black people as good, not evil. And we've seen a number of examples of Captain, sorry, of American government not taking proper care of veterans. If Sam becomes Captain America, he can help improve that. Same thing for the bank that didn't give them a loan because of the blip. Maybe he can improve things for refugees since he agrees with Carl's cause, just not methods. I don't know how much he could do for Isaiah Bradley since Isaiah wants to remain hidden, but maybe he could do something so that when Isaiah dies from natural causes, they do like an article on a major paper talking about terrorism. And yeah, you know, several of those things, you know, he got, yeah, Isaiah got the, the exhibit thing. And the, the Sam did talk to the GRC people about the uh, refugee, the, the, yeah, Carly's cause. Now, we didn't see, a, uh, it's, let's see, yeah, yeah, and there at the end, you know, people are cheering for Captain America being, you know, they, they don't mind that he's black, you know, so, so the, and let's see, did Steve, I think Steve did improve things. For some people by talking about, you know, we got to treat these people more humanely. But he didn't, wasn't mostly that he got rid of the evil, let's see. Well, yeah, I mean, he fought against the, the Sokovia Accords because they took away Wanda's freedom, among other things. So, so yeah. Let's see, so, yeah. And another thing I noted, the Power Brokers brought up in the previous, oh, it's actually, yeah. This is where we get, this is where we get to the notes for this specific episode. Real quick, for those who don't know, I'm talking faster than I usually do for these videos because my, I, I have got to go easy on my back, but I can't not record these if it's like too fast. I, I think YouTube has like a play at slower speed thing or, just, and, and also one for, for like speeding up. And I heard someone say that that makes people sound like Donald Duck. Please do that. I would love to sound like Donald Duck. So, the, yeah. The Power Broker is brought up in the previous line. So, the Power Broker must come up in this episode. 
So that Flag Smashers inside the building rather than invoke, I smell a diehard scenario, and ultimately wasn't quite that... It, that wouldn't have been as interesting. That wouldn't have been as action-packed. And I, I thought they did a great job. You know, when they bring in a new hero, I feel like you got to show why this, this new hero is so important. Why can't, you know, okay, so the other heroes can't be two places at once. But why, you know, so so when you have the Black Panther solo movie, for example, well, I mean, wouldn't Spider-Man or Captain America be able to do some of these things? And then you see him leap from a car like a cat and land on, the, you know, that's the kind of, I guess it's possible that Spider-Man could do that. I, I don't think, I, I don't quite think so. You know, that's the kind of thing. And, and Captain Marvel, if she hadn't been so insanely powerful, she would not have been able to prevent, you know, was it, was it the entire planet that they were going to blow up or were, was it parts of, even if it's just parts of it, you know, they were, they were threatening Earth and she just, you know, flies straight through these ships and just, yeah, so that's why that's, and with the new Captain America, Sam as Captain America, flying and wielding the shield, you know, he's doing things he couldn't have done without the shield and the, you know, yeah, some of these things, like, basically everything that the Wakandans, you know, he's he's gotten a lot better at using the shield, we saw that in the montage, and the Wakandans gave him, you know, so, someone pointed out, now it's not just Red Wing, it's Red Wings, there's at least two of them, you know, and the, the, yeah, everything has been improved, and the, the wings that he, like, cover, you know, and the shield, and the helicopter just, bink, and falls off, that's awesome, that's, and, and that's the thing, like, even Steve Rogers would not have been, he would have taken some damage, at least, if a helicopter landed, you know, I guess if most of it landed on the ship, but anyway, anyway, it, it really, for sure, nobody except Sam as Captain America would have been able to save all the people that he did in this episode, so, Love that. Very tense opening. And we see Falcon and Bucky getting close to the building. And Sharon... Let's see... Yeah, Sharon comes up to Bucky. And, you know, some of the people have pointed out, too, you know, she... The first thing we see her do in this episode is take off a mask. So that really should have told her... Told us she's... There's something about her that we don't know. And she's going to... We're, we're going to see it by the end of this episode. Just, like, when you see her, like... They're in in full power broker mode there at the end, you know, on the phone. Like, watch that clip, and then go back and watch like a brief clip of her on Everwood, and just see how like back then you would never have guessed that she would be able to do something this sinister, and like, and she does. She sells it, you know. I mean, I'm sorry, but there are some. I gotta stop apologizing. There are some actresses who can't quite pull off evil. I don't have anything personally against Jessica Alba. She seems like such a nice person. And sometimes she does give a good acting performance as well. I think most of the time it's when she moves outside of what she's, you know, she she probably should stay in her comfort zone. Or at least that's, you know, maybe she's gotten better. But last I saw, she did best when in her comfort zone. And... Yeah, you know, I mean, like her performance, she's trying in the in the second Sin City movie. She's trying, and some of the time it works fine, you know. She seems like a really, yeah, I don't think she could pull off Sinister. I hear pardons aren't everything they're cracked up to be. Depends on the therapist, and how frequently she goes for the notepad. Loving Sam's new suit. He throws the shield while flying. Very cool, which I don't think I've read any of his Captain America issues, but I hear that he, like, c certainly that he does. He both flies and wields the shield. I appreciate that this episode doesn't mess around. It goes to the, the you know, the, the hearing immediately. And really cool fight between, between Sam and the truck. And let's see. And you know, Carly and the other flag smashers planned on the evacuation. It's it's kinda like that. Uh okay, yes, yeah, so a brief spoiler for 
Splinter Cell, Splinter Cell Blacklist. There we go. There's an there's a level of that where you're supposed to trick the you know that they, they realize that this guy he's got like this panic room and it's like how are we gonna you know if if we if we get in and he hears something he's just gonna go to the panic room and then they're like we can use that we can trick him to go into the panic room and then we'll get into the panic room and we'll be right there you know and that's kind of the yeah so similar to the flag smashing through there so no more spoilers just spoil yourself blacklist for time being. Really glad we're getting more Sharon. I was a little worried that we wouldn't get more than we got up to this point. You know, I don't. I I do like every time we've seen her on the show, but I've been a little. A lot of it is just her on the phone, and it's not. You know, she. That's not. That's not nothing. But yeah, I'm. I'm really glad we're seeing her more in action and. It also makes the the reveal of her being the power broker more compelling. You know, it's it's more credible when we see she she's willing to get her hands dirty. You know, she's not just always on the phone, always sending people to do the dirty work. No, she's willing to do some, and and you know the the mercury gas thing. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that like, you know that this is why people say that she's judge, jury, and executioner in Magic Court. Like. Do not get on her bad side. And, and, you know, now we basically know it must have been her who killed Selby. And she killed Selby because Selby, like, basically, like, to close the, like, she, she didn't want Selby telling people about Dr. Nagel. And it, it did also save, the, you know, Sam and Bucky and Zemo. But then that was so that she could, you know, use them to get to the Flag Smashers. You know, it, it's, yeah. And I, I, you know, I like the Carly and Bucky talk on the phone, and then, you know, it's later he uses the the uh, the the app pretends to be one of the flag smashers and lures the flag smashers into an ambush, you know, and and then they just give give themselves up. They they realize they've lost by this point, and the you know that's the thing if you if you let someone use your phone, there's some chance that they're going to, like, fiddle around with an app or something. And, yeah, and, and you know, Bucky says on the phone, you don't think I'd ever fight for something bigger than myself. It's what I've always been trying to do, and I failed twice. So, yeah, he's, you know, I'm guessing he's talking about the end of Infinity War and him getting... You know, in in Captain America one, him disappearing out of the the train, and I mean, I can understand why he views those as failures, since it led to Winter Soldier stuff. It led to ah, now I'm just repeating what one of the Easter egg people said. Um. Anyway, moving on. So the, I mean, he did also help save the world at the end of Endgame. So it's not it's not nothing. I guess you could say two two out of three. And the GRC people are now trapped in the troop transports. I, I thought that was a very clever way of, you know, yeah, like if they, the, the moment that the, the if, if they just like surrounded them inside the, the building that they were going to have the meeting, the, the hearing, then it's just, you know, I mean, people are going to find out about that and then they're going to surround the building and they're not going to be able to get out of there. You know, but the moment that they have the GRC people in these troop transports, I th yeah, you, you know what I mean when I'm using the word. I, I think they're called something else, but I forget what it is, and troop transport definitely covers it. So then it's just, you know, then they can just drive them to some, you know, and yeah, it's, it's very, very clever. And Bucky tries to talk Carly out of... It pointing out that he has more experience in experience with killing people for a cause, and I I thought it was a, a good little like she's getting a she's getting one more chance. Put down the guns. We can still you know this doesn't have to end the way it looks like it's going to end. You know, and and you know Sam also gives her a chance by refusing to fight her, but the. Yeah, you know, Bucky gives her one last chance, Sam gives her one last chance. And Yeah, and, and Sharon plants the, the tracker with 
And then, you know, seriously, Bucky, you had one job. He has many jobs. And... Yeah, I wasn't laughing at the, the gas thing. I was laughing at the line, you had one job. It's very clever to have a rematch between Sam and the truck, since it's one of the only matches that Sam actually lost. You know, he did. He also has lost several matches against flag smashers, but, you know, the... the I, I think this is the only match where it was a one-on-one -on -one and he lost. And let's see. And yeah, using the shield, Sam does manage to at least temporarily defeat the truck. And Sam throws the shield and flies again. I could watch him do that a thousand times. I'm never tired of it. It's so badass. Very cool helicopter falcon chase. Sam has a new red wing, and it looks like his suit is like bulletproof, so it must really be vibranium. And it is like, let's see. So they. <laughs> They're not the biggest fans, the, the Dora Milaje are not the biggest fans of Bucky right now because he worked with Zemo and then he slowed them down getting to Zemo. But really, has Sam... I'm not sure if Sam, Sam has done anything directly to help, but I could imagine that they're still really grateful to Steve on account of the... Yeah, so so I could imagine it's it's that kind of thing that like Bucky talked to them and said, you know Steve would want this. You know that Steve would want for Sam to have better gear. And Carly is willing to kill the hostages. And one of the flag smashers is not exactly a, a fan and Carly yeah, Carly really is ready to die for the cause, and at first, two of the Flying Smashers aren't willing to go with Carly, but they do relent. I, I wondered if they're going to betray her, but I guess it's more that it tells us, even though they're having second thoughts, they are still doing it. And yeah, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to have to be stopped. You know, we... We, we agree... <laughs> I suppose not everyone does. I can only speak for myself. I agree with their cause, not with their methods. They have to be stopped. There's no getting around it. They are... They're, they're going to keep killing people until they achieve their goal, not realizing that that might never work. They might never be able to achieve their goal. I, I, I want to briefly talk about... Some people don't understand the, the kind of, like, why are some people willing to kill if they believe in their goal enough, or if they get really anxious. Excuse me. Is that? Ah, I guess that's fine. Okay. The thing is that, you know, the, the, let's see, she said, she doesn't, you know, Carly said that she doesn't remember, I, th I think it was the Mama Donya Ferrari, ah, what's that called? I, th I think you know what I'm talking about. Funeral. I think that's where she said, I don't remember where I'm from. I don't remember my original family. I just remember being alone. And then I think she says that that's even worse than being afraid, is being alone. And basically, she's afraid that she's going to go back to that. And really, I mean, before before she and the other Flag Smashers went to Madripoor, that basically was their, their, you know, and, and Madripoor, given that they, they pissed off the, the power broker, I don't think they're welcome there anymore, so, what are, you know, what, where, they're, they're going to be alone and an outcast no matter where they go, they're not welcome anywhere, and just the, the anxiety that, that, you know, the, the trauma of being alone and being in danger, yeah, you know, they're basically feeling like, well, these, the, these GRC people that are going to have this vote, they're, like, going to, you know, they're, they're going to mean that I might be in a situation where I might die, and then they, you know, even, even, they might not even think this, like, on a, on a conscious level, it's just that, like, when they hear about this vote, they, you know, their lizard brain goes, you're in danger, this is dangerous, you know, it, 
and it reacts essentially the same way as if you like see a, a predator in front of you, uh, whether it's the the space alien predator or the or like a lion or something. You know, your your lizard brain is saying you have to do something right now or you're gonna die, and yeah, that's and and that makes some people willing to kill, and I. That's the way I see it. Maybe you know, I, I that's that's my read of the the characters, and the show. Sam rescues both pilots from the helicopter and uses the wings and shield to protect himself. And the helicopter crashes basically on them. It makes a bunch of people on the freeway applaud. And Bucky does the meat missile thing and starts fighting the flag smasher, frustrating Carly. They start burning the troop transports for the GRC people. And let's see. I, th I thought it worked really well. You know, it's difficult to, like, the thing is, you have to give the good guys something to stop, something to fight to stop. But you also do have to make it make sense for the bad guy. You know, why are they doing this? And, like, for some movies and shows, I wash my hands last, since last I was out. And I will wash them again before I go out. The, the, yeah, so, so the, and, you know, to anyone worrying that I just touched my face, basically, the, you know, there, there are some comic books and, and movies based on comic books, keeping in mind I love both of those, that have a hard time, you know, they, they come up with something for the bad guy to do, for the good, that makes sense for, you know, the, you can really understand why the good guys want to stop it, but the, it's like, what, what's the bad guy getting out of this, this, it's not going to lead to anything good for them, and I feel like with this they did a good job. You know, basically, they wanted the GRC people either as hostages or as you know, or or they wanted to be able to kill them. And I mean, basically, I guess that's why they're driving off with them, right? They're they want to get away and then kill them, so that you know, by the time other people realize the GRC people are dead. The Flag Smasher is going to be far away from there because if they just start killing everyone in these troop transports, I mean, what's going to stop the cops from gunning them down? You know, at that point, it's, you know, so so I figure, and yeah, you know, setting it on fire, that's something that the good guys have to stop, and it buys the Flag Smasher some time, and if it ends up leading to people dying, that that's what the Flag Smashers wanted anyway. That's also why they, you know, one of them almost like falls over the edge of this like what's it called like a uh, construction yeah and Bucky tries breaking out the DRC people I, I really like it's, again I could watch him punch things that need to go that need to break for forever and never tire of it but yeah you know the the and it's it's clever this kind of locking mechanism that like we don't know for sure. I don't. I don't think we ever see one of the flag smashers actually disable one of them, but I'm guessing. I don't know. Maybe there's like a code or a, a key or something. And John Walker shows up. I. I really. That was really really cool. Like Morganthal and just yeah. That was. <laughs> he he figured out how to make. A strong entrance, even with, you know, if, even when people aren't considering him Captain America anymore, he can still make an entrance that really, yeah. And let's see. and and we see that John put his medal on the inside of the shield, so it kind of helps motivate him when he's using it to cover himself. And. Bucky manages to free the GRC people. Really glad to see some heroic life-saving stuff. It shouldn't only be fighting between good guys and bad guys. And and again, you know, by the end of this episode, he's, you know, he, yeah, later in this episode, he goes back to amending. And when the episode ends, he's amended, he's make made amends, I guess. He's made amends for every single person in the, in the, you know, book because it's never too late to mend, and this is one of the things that really helps, you know, he he is saving people also. And Bucky joins the fight against the Flag Smashers, he gets knocked, knocked off the road, 
and the Flag Smasher piloting the helicopter manages to knock Falcon into the water. But he makes a really badass leap out of it and knocking out the helicopter pilot and the woman in the helicopter takes over flying, saving them. And it was apparently like a like uh, the the one of the one of the Red Wing drones like scanned the people for like their their social media, I I guess is is that like trying to reclaim social media as a good thing? Like saying, you know, oh, but you know, you can really. It sure is a good thing that she wasn't one of the people who really embellished, you know. And like, um, when I said that, I was just trying to get baits, you know. Just let's see. And John and Carly continue to fight, and Carly seems to win. And. Let's see. Yeah, and the fact that Sam managed to defeat Batroc this time, other than, of course, the fact that he has new equipment to help, shows that he is even more determined now, believes the cause even more, and the training montage paid off. And really, at the end of the day, at the start of the first episode, he's just doing military contracts. It's not that big of a... It's not a passion project for him, basically. But this is. And... Yeah, and, and John pulls the transport back so it doesn't drop on Bucky, and let's see. And then the Flag Smashers attack him, and it does start dropping. Where's Spider-Man when you need him? And, and in fact, if the if the rumors about, you know, where where are the... Sp Spider-Man? Spider's Man? I, I, spider Man I guess, makes more sense. So I'm going to call it Spider's Man, because that's funnier to me. Where are the spiders, man? Seriously, the the there's supposed to be like at least three of them in the new movie, and not a single one of them could show up. To hell. anyway, I'm joking. And Sam manages to fly and prevent the transport from falling using muscles, determination, and the the flight engine thing. That was a really great kind of yeah. This like I've heard some people criticize this episode. I. I would argue you cannot claim that the heroic characters, you know, for sure, the heroic characters in this do some heroic stuff. You know, they really save people even when it's something, like, extremely difficult. Almost inhumanly, you know, it's, it, it's this massive, you know, troop transport thing. Like, it's insanely heavy and they still manage. And, yeah, Falcon manages to push the troop transport up, and he's recorded on cell phone. People cheer. I think Nerdist did a, I think it was a Nerdist video where they talk about that's very Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie of them. And, yeah, so Sam joins John and Bucky on the ground. But then Batroc fires these, you know, smoke grenades from a grenade launcher, and the Flag Smashers get a head start. But Sam, using the, the goggles to chase them, I... He can, the, the goggles can now detect footprints. Very cool. That's, yeah, I really appreciate how they keep bringing in new things. You know, like, the goggles, let's see, it was, in, in Ant-Man, the, the goggles enable him to see Ant-Man even though he's ant-sized, you know, and, yeah, over the course of the films they get upgrades and now they can detect footprints. That's, yeah. I mean, at this point, they're 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 getting pretty close to like, you know, one of the one of the Batman Arkham games level of like detective vision. So yeah, very very cool. They're really making great use of the new vibranium suit for Falcon and the gadgets that come with it. I'm glad to see that John doesn't try to fight Bucky or Sam. You know, they they. Yeah, they, they do all want to stop the Flag Smashers. This is not like when they were fighting over the shield. I'm really glad that... Uh, what's that say? Hmm. Hmm. I... I guess it's Batron. Nah, I, yeah, I'm going to have to move on.
Not sure what that note was supposed to mean. And Sharon tells Carla to drop the gun, and they both say they're disappointed in each other, and we, yeah, we find out Carly worked for Sharon until she betrayed Sharon without a super soldier. How much power does the power broker really have? So Sharon really is the power broker. And that, you know, the, the yeah, so every time she helped Bucky and, and Captain America, she was really, she just wanted to catch up to the Flag Smashers so she could get revenge on them. And, you know, she also wanted the, the vials back, but, you know, she couldn't prevent Zemo from, and, and without Zemo, they wouldn't have been able to find it, so, yeah. And Sharon shoots Batroc for blackmailing, and Carly, excuse me, shoots Sharon, wounding her. And Sam catches up to Carly. We killed 10 this time, next time 100. Where does it end? I'm not going to fight you, another move he learned from Steve. Steve refused to fight Bucky at the end of Captain America 2. And, yeah, we see Bucky use the app. Flag Smashers used to, to trick them. And John Walker quotes Lincoln, and now Bucky and John have the kind of relationship that Sam and Bucky had before this show. And it is like, dude, just, okay, it's a great quote. Don't, don't do that. Don't stand there quoting Lincoln. It, it's really, yeah. And let's see, I've, I've seen some say that they thought the, the redemption of John was too... Like, e you know, too, too easy. They didn't feel like it was earned. I mean, Bucky and Sam have only fought John when John was... Like, really the, I, really the only time they fought against him was when he refused to give up the shield. And, yeah, that was, you know, a big fight. And, yeah, he tried to kill... I think he... I guess he did try to kill both of them. But the, the I, I really don't think that the, you know, Sam and Bucky would refuse to fight alongside John as long as he is, yeah, you know, the, the oh, and, and, you know, I forget exactly who one of the East Bay people said, you know, oh, you know, John cold, you know, killed the Flag Smasher in cold blood. I don't think that applies. I'm, I, he was, he seemed pretty hot-blooded at the time. He killed, the, he murdered the guy for sure, but it wasn't cold-blooded. You know, cold-blooded is like Hitman a Agent 47 killing you. But, no, he was, he was pretty hot-blooded, but it was still murder. He killed a guy who couldn't defend himself. And, yeah, Carly insists that Sam fight her back. He continues to resist doing so. You know, and, and yeah, at least one of the Easter egg people pointed out that was very, you know, it's, it's like Steve saying, I can do this all day. And I don't think it would feel right if that was what Sam said. He needs to make it his own thing, you know. He's, he's also still flying. Now Captain America can fly. It needs, he needs to make it his own thing. Now, and, yeah, so Carly is about to shoot Sam, and Sharon shoots her instead, and one of these Drake people point out, I'm, I, I'm not 100% certain if they thought it was a good thing or a bad thing, but they pointed out that means that Sam doesn't have to make the, you know, make the moral judgment of whether or not to, to kill her, but, you know, I, I think you could say that it's it's a live by the sword, die by the sword thing. It's it's a thing of okay, so Sharon apparently is not a good person, but Carly has gone around and attacked a lot of people. And yeah, eventually if you know if you keep attacking everyone around you, eventually someone's gonna attack you back. And if you've been killing people all around you, eventually someone is going to kill you. And Yeah, so, you know, the action stuff basically ends with, like, 25 minutes left of the episode, although 
you know, maybe 10 minutes of it is probably in credits. But yeah, I, I guess it was like 15 minutes of wrap up. I, I'm not sure I'd expected that, but uh, I mean, I guess I should have. You know, this show doesn't really... And, and that's something I appreciate. I'm really glad this was not a TV show. I'm really, really glad that they didn't feel they have to meet. Once again, I love Prison Break. And I think for that show, it really worked that they did have to have something exciting or tense or suspenseful. At, you know, is it every seven minutes? I, I don't live in America, but I think it's like every seven minutes a show like that would have a brief commercial break. So they have to keep giving you a reason to stay through the commercial break instead of going to another channel, you know. I'm really glad that this show did not have to do that because it would have been completely different and it would have been a weaker show, but it, it's not afraid to just have characters talk. And the fact that that works is a testament to the writing, to the characters, to the acting. So yeah, Carly dies in Sam's arms. So the people who knew that Sharon was the power broker are dead. Although I guess possibly the other Flag Smashers know, but without proof, not sure the others are really going to take their word for it. And I wrote that note before I saw the transport they were in blow up. So that it completely puts, uh, you know, and, right, and, and you know, some, some people said that um, the fact that, you know, when, when Zemo was talking about the power broker, he used male pronouns. Maybe, you know, that, that person theorized that maybe when Sharon is, you know, operating as the power broker face to face with someone, she's wearing a mask because she, the mask she wore did make her look like a man when she, you know, when she approached Bucky before taking off. And, it's, yeah, and, and Sam asks the, you know, the, the GRC people, they need to stop calling the refugees terrorists. And on camera in front of the world, discuss the issues with the GRC people. And yeah, I, th I thought it was a really great, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't worry, not going to quote that entire speech. It's like two minute speech or something. I'm just going to say I loved it. I know some people are going to call it cheesy. I think sometimes, you know, I am, okay, so I haven't watched Wonder Woman 1984. And I hear that one goes overboard with the cheese. But having watched the first Wonder Woman, you know, Patty Jenkins, who directed it, you know, was accused of being cheesy or, sh or something. And she said, I hate that word. We're so afraid of emotional sincerity. And for this, I really agree. I, I think, you know, and what was it? I think it might have been Black Nerd Comedy who said, take me to Marble Land. I wish I was in this, uh, you know, in, yeah, in a character in the show instead of the real world because... Is, you know, Sam is making so much sense, and, and the fact that it seems like they might actually listen to him, you know. I'm hoping that, you know, it has happened in the, we know that it has happened in the past, so I hope it ha will happen this time. Sometimes culture, pop culture, affects real world politics. You know, the, the, some people have credited I forget what the movie's called. Saboteur, maybe one one of Hitchcock's movies, in like the the was it in the forties actually? It was it was right around that time certainly. You know, some some people have said that was the movie that convinced the American people that America should enter World War Two, and once enough people felt that way, the politicians, you know, agreed that that should be the thing. And you know, it is like you got to be careful with starting wars that are unpopular, because that is going to, yeah, you know, the, the way I feel, basically, if you're sure that a war needs to be fought, and it's currently unpopular, you gotta start by trying to make your case, convince people why they should be, why, why they should be on your side, why they should want the, the war to be fought, and, you know, yeah, I'm really hoping that it will help, you know, and, uh, was it the Ponderer who pointed out, he, he he did the video before watching episode 6, after watching episode 5, that apparently a bunch of morons online are, like, saying, oh, you know, Black Captain America, well, you have Rhodey in the Iron Patriot suit, that's not the same thing. Just It's not just the that he's wearing the American flag, it's also whether... 
Roby hasn't even been the starring role in any of these. I, I guess arguably Endgame he comes close to being one, but it's that's not no. It's it's and and yeah, you know, thankfully this is now you know, as of the the end credit title screen, you know, Sam is now Captain America. So the and and yeah, it is gonna punch that. <laughs> Piss a bunch of people off in real life, and you know, one of the one of the Easter egg people said, you know, oh, I guess he's he's breaking the fourth wall. He's talking about trolls online. It's, you know, when he says that millions of people are going to think it's wrong for him as a black man to wear the stars and stripes. And I, I'm not sure I saw one of the other Easter egg people point this out. I'm not saying that you know they 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 catch a bunch of stuff I don't. I'm not it's blaming them or anything. I have to wonder if it's like how I, I know that some some black policemen feel that the that it's you know that that the yeah people think other black people don't think that a black man should be a cop because that's working for the enemy basically and I'm not saying that there's that much of a you know sadly we do know a lot of cops in America and other large countries, they, they do really, you know, regardless of skin color or gender or anything, some of them are really monstrous. A lot of them are really monstrous. And it seems like the vast majority, I, I suppose, I won't say absolutely everyone, but the vast majority of cops will back up the cop that has been caught on camera doing something unbelievably cruel, sometimes you know, even murder. But I have to, you know, I, I, that was, that was something that it did make me think. I'm, I, Sam is definitely going to be a much better Captain America than a lot of cops are at being policemen, at, at actually helping the people they're supposed to. Let's see, is it the, uh, people are supposed to be police for? That's what I'm going with. We finally have a common struggle now. The people who've been begging, literally begging, you know, it's, it's, yeah, such a great speech. And Sam points out how that, you know, how helpless the GRC people felt while as hostages, that's how helpless the refugees felt and all the other people struggling. So that's a great, and, and, you know, he's, he straight up says the, the people making these decisions are powerful people. You don't have anyone in there. You're not listening to anyone that these these uh, decisions will affect. And that's that's 100%. That is the exact problem. I'm really glad. I We've come so far. We, we really, like... Yeah, superhero movies and, and shows can now say that that's, that's the exact problem. The exact problem. You know, that's the problem with corporations, with governments. It's, you know... We have to make huge changes to corporations and, you know, yeah, there are a number of things governments do, but a, a huge, you know, one of, the, one of the best steps to take is to make sure that people who are affected, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to claim that Joe Biden has done a million things that have impressed me as a progressive, but he does at least have a fairly diverse cabinet and that's the that's how you do these things you've got to have someone in there who is actually being affected by these things you can't just have it be people who are already powerful who aren't going to be affected you know the the i think it was was it young turks who pointed out that, you know tucker carlson doing the doing the joker laugh <laughs> i think you know i th there's been a i've, I've heard people theorize he doesn't believe that much of what he says. He's just, he's acting. He's pretending to be someone that he knows will be popular with conservatives. I think we might have seen a crack in the facade. And, yeah, possibly some, some crack in his system. That is, I don't think you're, to, to paraphrase The Simpsons, I don't think a healthy person is supposed to make that kind of noise. Anyway, the, the, so yeah, the this show completely understands that it's not just, you know, oh, think of think of if he just said 
you you need to hire more black people you need to hire more diverse that's not enough you know if you just like we've seen tons of conservative black people women you know latinx people that's not enough it's not enough to talk to someone who comes identity politics is not going to cut it okay we we need someone in there who is actually affected by these things and people who make a lot of money off regurgitating conservative talking points that's not going to make fox news be a more you know they're, they're still not really going to represent the other side because they know if they do they lose and yeah sam makes a statement to the world on camera pointing out he's the first black and black captain america the public knows and i really like seeing it you know isaiah bradley and torres watching on tv and sam points out they need to start thinking about the people they impact they need yeah, they need people who are impacted by it in the room. Sam points out that no one has been asking why these people have been doing, and and again, that's that's exact that's that's such an important step. Why are these people doing something that we don't want them doing? How, you know, are are we gonna, you know, it doesn't it you can't just when someone doesn't behave the way you want them to, you can't just attack them and then expect them to behave better you know that's that's just it's it's does it ever work i'm not 100 percent sure it ever works i think that there are some yeah i'm, I'm not gonna get into i'll uh, i think i'll try to think about if i know of any examples where it works it's it's basically just you know to, to quote you james you just 1978 People who hit, you know, pa parents who hit their children, for example, they do it because they feel like it and they know they can get away with it. They don't do it because they think it'll actually work. They do it because when they see mis that their kid misbehave, it makes them angry. When you get angry, you want to hit someone. And that's it. I know there are people who are going to call the speech preachy, but I unreservedly love the speech. Actually, come to think of it, I'm not sure any of the Easter egg people said, even though one of them really didn't like it. He, he didn't like the technical aspect. Uh, cinema, cinema blend? I, I forget. But yeah, he did say he loved, the, you know, he didn't have problem. He, I, I don't think he had any problems with, like, themes. It was the technical aspect. And Bucky jokes, he wasn't paying attention to the speech, and then, you know, they walk up, nice job, uh, Cap. That means a lot to Sam, you know, coming from Bucky. The, there, there, there's been a lot of conflict between the two of them. But, the, yeah, so that's a, that's a great. And, let's see. Yeah, so, uh, real brief spoiler for the end of Alias Season 1. So people referring to the power broker using male pronouns, it was like this misdirect. In Alias Season 1, the big man turns out to be a woman, so it's it's a clever... No more spoilers. For Alias. And the Flag Smashers are going to put, be put in the rack, we think, but then it turns out one of the guys with the troop transport is a Flag Smash. It's like a triple twist, I guess. First is, oh, they're going to be put in the rack. So they might work with Zima. Oh, no, wait. They're going to be free. Oh, no, wait. They're going to be blown up. So, yeah, that was... <laughs> and, you know, Zemo smiles in his cell, hearing the, the radio, knowing the butler did You know, like like one of the Easter egg people said, the butler actually did it this time. And, yeah, you know, it really did. It, it feels like that is exactly what he wanted. You know, the the... All the Flag Smashers are dead. Basically, he got rid of everyone who had recently taken the serum other than John Walker. Now, I'm not sure the, the butler can just get rid of John Walker with ease, the way things are. Yeah. And we see that Countess Val is talking with John Walker's wife. And I like that, you know, I couldn't have planned it better myself. You know... Uh, is ah uh, I maybe I did nah I did or did I <laughs> and 
and Walker has now become U.S. agent in the comic accurate costume, and we even get the the what was it called title title drop name drop. Things are about to get weird. When they do, we're not going to need a Captain America. We're going to need a U.S. agent. So yeah, it really really looks like you know Dark Avengers and or Thunderbolts is what we're what we're I I, I think it's at least one of the Easter egg people say that. You know, maybe, you know, Ross himself will become Red Hulk. I would love that. That would be so good. I, I really hope that, yeah. I'm really glad that John is still around. And the, yeah, they gave him the U.S. agent mantle. Which, if you know the comics, means trouble. And, yeah, Bucky talks to Mr. Nakajima. And tells him the truth, even though it clearly hurts. I really appreciate that they didn't just leave the you know leave the the plot thread dangling. I wasn't entirely sure if they were going to bring it back. I, I mean that is really it does resolve every plot line. I think like we know you know what yeah so let's see Dora Milaje Zemo who's going to be Captain America what's going to happen with the Flag Smashers who is the power broker. What's going to happen to John Walker? Yeah, I, I think every single... And, and yeah, I mean, we, we don't know exactly what Zemo is... Sorry, Bucky. Sorry. What Bucky is going to do after this show, where he's going to show up, I'm hoping maybe he'll be in Black Panther 2 as the White Wolf. You know, the... the I mean, they, they didn't say never come back. They said... Make yourself scarce for the time being. Actually, that could be interesting if he comes back to the country. Like, there's a theory that Black Panther 2 is going to involve Namor and the, let's see, the, the people of Atlantis. And maybe Bucky could be an important kind of, because he has been in, you know, he's been on both sides in really major conflicts. And Bucky returns to the, to the therapist, and all the names for amends have been crossed out. There's a note thanking the therapist for the help. Can't help but notice he didn't thank her for, for, for the pad and pen, but okay. It's very passive-aggressive of him. And, let's see. Yeah, Sam goes to talk to Isaiah. His grandson still is really like, it's it's just it's kind of funny the way that he and you know Isaiah is impressed with Sam. You're special. I mean, you ain't no Malcolm Martin or Mandela. Yeah, that's that's a that's an that's an old guy thing to do. Like, you've really impressed me. But you know, back in my day, let's see, we built this country. We bled for it. I'm not going to let anybody tell me I can't fight for it. And that, again, that's it's 100% true. Like, I know, you know, some some conservatives, you know, watch the episode, hear that line, tear their hair out, do the research. Uh, African Americans have been literally building America, building, you know, fighting in the wars, building, yeah, building buildings, doing this in, you know, insane amount of labor. And for a huge chunk of it, they, you know, they were slaves doing it. So, so yeah, it's, it's absurd to say that black people don't belong in America. When the, you know, your issue is not with current black people. Your issue is with, you know, if, if you're a white conservative American, your issue is with your own, ah, what's it called? Ancestors. You know, I'm not saying you have to hate them for it. But if you if you really wish that there weren't black people in America today, it, it was your ancestors who kidnapped them. You know, it the, they they weren't like sneaking in when when it's anyway. And yeah, Sam takes Isaiah Riley and his grandson to the exhibit for Steve Rogers, shows them the section for Isaiah, so everyone will know he was a hero. This was a really perfect way. To pay tribute to him, I, I really it was it was perfect. That was one hundred percent. And apparently, it is there's there's something very similar in the comics. So again, they are just yeah. 
let's see. And yeah, there's some celebrations. There's neighborhood. Bucky plays with the two kids, and he does, you know, like, like he's he's like holding out his metal arm, and they're like, you know, he's like they're they're. Yeah, he's he's carrying them, and he's like pretending like he doesn't even notice, and standing and talking to people off in the. That's that's a cool. That's I I have yeah. If I was a kid, I would have loved doing that, and I've known, you know, yeah. When I was a kid, I knew other kids who would love doing it, like hanging on to to you know that's, and it's such a great because like when they saw him wake up, they were like, we gotta we gotta leave Captain America Shield. We're in trouble now, and you know now they see it's no, and yeah, it's like the the. I'm thinking Sam told Bucky, as long as you don't flirt with my sister, I'll talk to my nephews. You guys can can play together. You know that they just they need to be told that the really strong white guy who they've never met, who used to kill people, he's not gonna hurt them. That's kind of a that's. It's an important first step on the path to, to a positive relationship between Bucky and the kids. Let's see. So, the ways that I hope Sam will try to help people with the banks of Jersey and Isaiah came true. Not saying it's brag, saying it to underline that they did a really great job. But those notes right after rewatching the first five episodes. You know, I've. I've did I finish? I think, yeah. I I didn't I didn't get through all of episode five. I I binged the first four episodes and the first half of episode five, and then I had to take a break because real life stuff happened. But yeah, you know, the, based on those five episodes, I I made the notes. You know, I I got in, yeah, some of the first notes I got got into in this video, and yeah. I, I thought they did a really great job wrapping everything up like that. And, yeah, so ultimately it seems like the Flag Smashers are gone by the very end of this episode. You know, the, the members that had Super Soldier Serum in their veins are dead. And if Sam's speech really did manage to make things better, then they're no, they no longer have a cause. So they don't need to, yeah. And the closing credits are at least somewhat different, reflecting how things have changed. And we see Sharon getting a pardon. There may be an opening in your own department. Is that something you might be interested in? It would be an honor. And Sharon gets on phone, says they're going to have access to government secrets, weapons and such. Even if they don't have super soldiers anymore. Very cool, very chilling. And just, yeah, you know, the... the Yeah, you know, it's, it, it's great to see, is is that what they call like a heel turn? I feel like I've heard that referred to as a heel turn. We did not expect her to do this. You know, like when we when we watched Captain America 2 and 3, we did not think she was going to turn out to be this, you know, completely evil villain that like, you know, I, I mean, she's basically, she's selling dangerous things to the highest bidder so that, you, you know, just... Yeah, cause cause there's a lot of money in it. It's, I mean, at least at least the flag smashers believe in a cause, but she just wants to. Her issue with the flag smashers were that they took some of her merchandise. There's like there's a lot of money in that. You stole it from me. I'm gonna kill you and I'm gonna take it back. Now there's a theory that she might have been evil all along. The thing she did in Civil War. She didn't do them to help Steve Rogers. She did them to hurt the Avengers. I think there's a chance that's true. It's, it's again, really clever. I am kind of hoping that it doesn't turn out that she's just a scroll. I I have huge... I'm, I'm, I'm extremely looking extremely forward to Secret Invasion. I do hope that Sharon doesn't turn out to be a scroll. But, you know, obviously they do have to... It, it can't only be new characters. They have to reveal that someone we already knew is is like a scroll. Other you know, otherwise it's not gonna have much of an effect. But I hope they choose very wisely, because there's a lot of characters that we really don't want to turn out to be scrolls. 
So John Walker is going to work for someone that Val is working for. So yeah, Dark Avengers, Thunderbolts, Zemo might be one of those. And I <clears throat> I guess they're not working for the power broker since she said on the phone she doesn't have access to super soldiers. I mean, I guess it could be a misdirection, but hmm. Yeah, I'm 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 of two minds on the issue. It didn't happen exactly how we expected to, but the power broker did indeed go through with threats she sent to the Flag Smashers, Carly in particular. You know, she said, "I will kill you." She did. And yeah, I mean, basically, Sharon was lying there wounded. She was just waiting for a good opening. Like, if she if she had shot Carly when Carly was, like, punching and kicking Sam, you know, that's like, I mean, eh, that's, that's a bit, you know, she wouldn't want Sam to know that she was willing to do that. But instead, she waits for Carly to get her hands on a gun. And at that point, it's, you know, it's not self-defense, but it's defending the life of someone else. There's no doubt that Carly would at least have tried to kill her. Did he not have... I don't... I mean, if he had the shield, he should be able to cover. But I'm not sure if it maybe got thrown to the side during the fight. I forget. And let's see... Yeah, and, you know, the... the you know, Sharon used the ridiculous sci-fi mask. I, even before I watched the Easter egg video, I was already going to compare it to the, the Mission Impossible movies. But, you know, the first time we saw it, Black Widow was using it in Captain America 2. That was the first time we saw Sharon as well. It would make sense that Sharon would have made sure to grab at least one of those before leaving S.H.I.E.L.D. And in both cases, they used it whilst not working for S.H.I.E.L.D. So she is applying the lessons she learned from Black Widow without the moral guidance that Black Widow was trying to apply when she joined S.H.I.E.L.D. and even after leaving S.H.I.E.L.D. I like that the ending has the bad guys achieve their goal, but not because of the violence they were willing to inflict, but because they convinced the heroes of the moral rightness of the cause. So it's a lot like the Black Panther solo movie. I like that John used the metal to give himself the boost he needed by having it inside of the shield, so he would look directly at it if he held the shield to cover himself, cover his head. He said that the metals reminded him of the worst day of his life. He was unable to save everyone that he wanted to at that point, but now because of super strength on the shield, he can. And, you know, back when Lamar was alive, he would be the angel on John's shoulder, encouraging him to do the right thing. Once Lamar died, he immediately started doing the wrong thing. And at first he did the wrong thing in a way that got him punished. But he came to realize that he could do wrong things without getting punished. And now he's going to do them as a U.S. agent working for Countess Val. You know, so he used to be at least partially, you know, in check by working for the government. When he found out the government would not have his back, if he made a mistake, he didn't learn to be more careful to not make mistakes. He learned to stop working for the government. He's a really compelling character. I'm really glad they didn't kill him off in the show. I'm really excited to see where they're going to use him next, what he's going to do. And I figure... You know, the, I, I think at least one of, yeah, one of these people pointed out, you know, Zemo might be involved with Dark Avengers, Thunderbolts, whatever exactly they're going to end up calling the team, even though John is also on that team, you know, he would, Zemo would probably make an exception to, you know, he, he, he does hate people who intentionally take super soldier serum with, you know, pals, he might have some respect for Steve, but he also worked with Bucky, Okay, to be fair, he didn't take it on purpose, but he is using it. You know, Bucky does, you know, Bucky isn't, like, going off and, and like, choosing to, to, you know, I mean, some people, after they've ended up hurting people, they don't, you know, decide, okay, I'm going to hurt people who deserve to be hurt. They're like, I'm never going to hurt anyone again. 
and you know they do like they they like try to convince other people not to hurt others as well. Let's see. So I talked about that. Yeah. So you know now that we know for, for fact Sharon is the power broker. You know, the fact that Nagel was dead was one of the problems that she told her body bodyguard about in the episode where Nagel is killed by Zemo. I really appreciate that Bucky acknowledges that he and Steve had not thought about what it would be like to give the shield back to a black man in episode five. Back when they made you know, back when they made the first Captain America movie, it was very difficult to get a titular character in the MCU that wasn't a white man, so I really appreciate that they acknowledge that. I've seen at least some people question Sharon being able to enter this, you know, the, the, you know, match rapport with, like, pirates and all this legal stuff, you know, it's hard to believe that she would become the power broker having, you know, like, she, you know, she, she goes there having recently been, like, CIA, and then she becomes the power broker, you know, you'd think there were other people in match rapport who had much longer history who, you know, would become the power broker, at the risk of sounding like an apologist, maybe it will turn out that she started out as the protege of the original power broker, but then killed the original power broker and took over. I could imagine it would be something like that. Let's see. I guess, yeah, I'm just really quickly going to give an example. So, spoilers for Prison Break. I guess if I say which season, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to say all seasons. So, I'm thinking something along the lines of near the very end of season three of Prison Break, where T-Bag has been the protege of Lechero, and he kills Lechero, and goes out there, and now he's the new leader. You know, I could figure that there would be something like that. So, no more spoilers for Prison Break for the time being. I saw this one person question what the Flag Smashers were trying to accomplish in this episode, they argued the vote would still be held, it would just be postponed. Somewhat. I'm not saying that the Flag Smashers would accomplish their goals, but I think the idea is, Carly figured, if they did kill the GRC people, then that would scare the next group of GRC people into doing what they want. Remember, Carly said in an earlier episode, violence is the only language these people understand. And as I've been saying, I agree with their cause, not their methods. They are essentially now terrorists, and one goal of certain terrorists is to threaten and use violence in order to scare their enemies into doing what they want. Again, I'm not saying that it would have worked. I think that is the mindset, and I personally do buy that Carly is that far radicalized by this point in the show. I mean, let's not, you know, it's it's, it's, it's been a while since we've really talked about Osama bin Laden since, you know, Obama managed to assassinate him back in 2011, which was when Fox News decided it probably was not important anyway, now that the guy we don't like was in charge of killing him. It's been a while since we thought a lot about him, but let's, you know, if we just briefly remember, he thought that by, you know, the, the attacks on 9-11, that would lead to Muslims all over the world rising up and thus, uh, I, I want to say it's the caliphate is their, their terminology, to use their terminology, and it didn't happen at all. Osama bin Laden had hugely over, uh, you know, it, it, sure, there were, there have been other terrorists since that have had, you know, basically the same goal, but Osama bin Laden actually thought that a huge chunk of the Muslims living all over the world would be willing and interested, willing to do and interested in doing that kind of thing. He did, because he's that far, he was that far radicalized. And in this show, Carly is that far radicalized. No, it, it, I, it's, it's not that it could never work. There are situations where some people have used violence to prevent something from, you know, the, the, yeah, some, you know, some, some, Political figures have been assassinated by people who were, you know, who didn't want them to keep doing what they were doing or to finish doing what they had started doing, that, that kind of thing. 
and sometimes that has worked. <laughs> Don't do it. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's ever okay. Do not kill a political figure. I mean, I mean, okay, if if it's like if they're a dictatorial leader, maybe. But if you live in a democracy, do not kill a polit politician, no matter what they're saying. But the the yeah. I, I really think that's the way we're supposed to read it, that she's that far radicalized, which is also why, I mean, she, Sam has related to her, and he's saying, you, you got to stop doing violence. I, you know, your, your cause is just, but you have to stop killing people. And in this episode, she, she almost killed Sam. You know, if, if Sharon hadn't shot her, she, yeah, she would have, at least tried to kill Sam, even though he's been relating to her, even though he's been saying, I agree with your cause, but not your methods, because she's that far gone. She can't, she can't see beyond it. In her mind, if people stop, if the Flag Smashers are not doing what they're doing, then the refugees are going to be treated like terrorists. Let's see. So, so yeah, like with the WandaVision twist that Agnes was Agatha Harkness, a lot of people had guessed that Sharon would turn out to be the power broker. And as Movie Bob said for WandaVision, you know, I agreed for WandaVision. I think it's also true of this show. I am really glad they didn't panic and try to come up with a twist that people hadn't guessed. You know, Disney Plus MCU shows are now two for two. Yes, some people had guessed one of the major twists of each show. Yes, they trusted the story was strong enough that people would still find the show compelling, even though they had guessed a major twist. So, I really, I hope they keep doing that, because let's be honest, some of, there are, there's, let's see, are any of these characters a full century old? I, possibly not a full century, but for some of them it's approaching. There have been comics for a long time, and everything that these characters have done, you know, I mean, it might actually be, more difficult to come up with something that hadn't been done in the comics at all, in any way, shape, form, or fashion, than to pick, a, you know, something that's so obscure in the comics that most people don't know about it. You know, people are going to guess the twists, and that's fine. Uh, if, if a story can't survive you knowing the twists going into it, it's not a strong enough story to begin with. And, you know, I've I've seen some things where I knew spoilers, and... Yeah, for the really well-made ones, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. And that is everything that is... So, I am going to stop recording, and then I'm going to do the spoiler-free review. So, yeah, this is it for... This is... At least, this is the plan. This is the last video I'm going to make with spoilers about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I mean, so, I mean... I'm probably going to find some way to bring it up when talking about Loki. So, for this specific show, you know, once the, and I guess that, yeah, if I remember, there's, like, so next, that next Friday, they're not going to have a new episode of something Disney plus Marvel. So, really going to miss it, but I am incredibly hyped for Loki. It's, 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 it's going to be amazing. <laughs> I, I, yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.